Hello. Hello. I have a few minutes. Oh, I've already got two thumbs up. Gee, how does that happen when you're not even here? Hello. Welcome. Come in. Come in. I'm going to open my Dr. Pepper. My diet, Dr. Pepper. And my King's Crown. What do they call that? Thumbnail? I have a couple more, but they're the diamond pattern, whatever they call it, diamond cut. Hi there. Two people here. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome. Come in, come in, come in. Come in. Come in. They're here. I just thought I'd relax and come on for a few minutes and chat. Oh, hi, Shelly. How you doing? I've been to Reno today. My daughter's boyfriend's having a birthday, so we had lunch with him today in Reno. Oh, kitty, kitty, kitty. Do you want to come say hi? Come on. Come on, Dixie Belle. Come here. I'm about to introduce you to my kitty. I can't believe she's coming out. Come here. Come here. Look, this is Dixie. This is my Dixie Belle. Hi, Brian. Hi, Linda. This is Dixie Belle. Dixie Belle is my diabetic kitty, and she has to have insulin injections once a day. Um, and sometimes I skip Saturdays, though, and she does absolutely just fine with that. But she doesn't get it until you mean I actually probably should have fed her eh, before I came on. I'll come out in a little bit. I'll take a break in a few minutes and feed you. I promise. I promise. Yeah, she's got great face. She, I've had her since she was a kitten. I actually uh, fostered her from the Humane Society. I had fostered one other cat, and I was done with that. Oh, we ended up adopting her. Her name was Trixie, and we ended up adopting her. I couldn't give them back, so I had to quit fostering because I can't give them back. So I had just finished adopting her, and they called me and said they had another single kitty all by herself Would I foster her. Because uh, she was young and um, she ha still had to be, she wasn't eating on her own. So I'm like, oh my God, oh my gosh. I'll come out in a minute, honey. And anyway, so uh, when I first got her, she was, she had come in. I don't know how they found her. They don't give you all that information, but thank you, Brian. So, um, hi, Julie. I'm doing very well, thanks. Um, so anyway, she was just little tiny thing she was only like i think oh what they tell me she was two or three weeks old she didn't have to be bottle fed she had maybe she was older than that but not a lot more three four weeks maybe she didn't have to be bottle fed her eyes were open but she didn't know how to eat on her own so i would have to spoon feed her and i would just take like um the mushy, the pate type food, and I'd put it on like a plastic spoon and she would eat it off the spoon. And when I moved out here, she was a few years old by that time and she was fine. Um, it, we had a tough time trying to get her. She liked when we lived at the business in Reno before we moved out here, she liked the garage. And so we did have kind of a hard time catching her and getting her out of the garage. But once we did and we got her out here, I just kind of locked her up for a couple of weeks uh, in the spare bedroom. I would let her out, you know, open the door and let her um, wander out into the living room. But of course, she couldn't go outside or anything for a few weeks. And uh, so she had been fine until about a year and a half ago. She started getting really sick. She lost a ton of weight really, really fast. Hi, Diane. Yay. And did it arrive intact? It wasn't broken or anything, I hope. Anyway, so she started losing all kinds of weight and she got very weak and I took her to the vet and I didn't think she was going to pull through. I really thought I was going to end up having to put her to sleep. Uh, they determined she was diabetic. We got her on insulin and um, so we started do the, doing the injections and she popped back. So um, she's done really good since then. So yeah, I am going to go out and, and feed her really, really, really fast and I'll be right back. I'm sorry. Okay, here you go, sweetie. 
Okay, so and she has to have a special, she has to have special food too. No smoking, no smoke, well, not that kind of smoking, anyway. no, no cigarettes, unless it's like your, your magic wand cigarette. Um, yeah, so she's got to be on special food too, and she can only have wet food. And so her food is in like almost $60.00 for 24 cans so it doesn't even last me a month because she gets a can of that today plus I supplement in between with the fancy feast but she can only have the pate she can't have any of the flake stuff or any of that kind of thing so you know she she costs me about a hundred dollars a month just in food and then her insulin her little vial of insulin lasts oh I don't know two and a half three months probably and that's like another hundred dollars but I don't care She's, you know, I'll take care of her. I, I took her in and, and assumed the responsibility so she gets what she needs. Oh, Dr. Pepper, so good. Yeah, so Reno was pretty good today. Brian, thank you for the card. That was a really nice surprise to open my mailbox and find that card from you, too. That was super, super thoughtful and much appreciated and made my day. And Kristen, hi there. Hey, Kristen, this is the very first thing I bought from you, I don't know, over a year ago, I think was these earrings, and I've never worn them until today. And I forgot how pretty they really are. They've got like these little opalescent rhinestones up in here. And then this is like a mother of pearl. And I, this is the very, very first thing I think I bought from you. And I've never worn them before. And I put them on today and I was hoping you'd be here so I could show you that I'm actually wearing them and I love them. I think they're really pretty. Anyway, so are you guys in the mood to shop or are you shopped out today? I've got stuff. I've got all kinds of stuff. Thank you. I like them. I really do. I think they're really pretty. I had a different shirt on, but I spilled something on it at lunch. And uh, so I came home and I want to wear it to karaoke tonight. It's white. It's a white t-shirt with like fringes that hang off of the shoulders. Um, hello, Jules. How are you doing? <laughs> Is D still on? She's usually wrapping it up about this time. So I really try hard not to interfere with her sale. Um Anyway, so um, what was I saying? I don't know. I have all kinds of shit. I've got stuff everywhere. Do you want glass? Do you want, do you want, I've got, I'll show you this. If you're interested in it, let me know if somebody is interested in it. I'm pretty sure this is a hand painted piece. Look at this. I found this at a flea market last week. The little funny flea market down, just down the street. I, I zipped in there last Sunday for a while and ended up picking this up. I picked up two pieces of Fenton. Um, and I picked up another piece that I'm not going to sell yet. And it turns out, I thought at first it was, um, like maybe that black Mexican pottery. And uh, then another friend came over and I was showing it to her and she put it up to the light and you can see purple through it. So it's, it's black amethyst glass. It's very cool. Very, very cool. <laughs> I know I'm a shopaholic, Jules. Julie, I am always shopping. Anyway, this is the lid and it appears to be hand painted. And this is a pretty good size. I'll measure this for you in a minute. Super, super pretty. You can see the hand painting through all of it. And when you turn it over, the inside is padded. And I have a hunch maybe somebody did that with this piece later on. Uh, I don't know, but it's, it's it's very neat. What they used it for, I have no idea. Show us your wares. Um, and then here is, it's like a, a large trinket box kind of thing, or I don't know, but the inside, see, has the lining too, except it doesn't cover all the way through. It's attached all around the, around the sides. It's blue. It's a blue fabric. Um, and it's, it's very pretty. And the sides are all the hand painted too. Now the bottom, 
it doesn't have a maker, but it says, and I've Googled this and can't find shit. It says Pam Dean Seminar, May 11th, 12th, and 13th, 1995, Morgan Mandley, it looks like, M-A-N-D-L-E-Y. And I have a hunch somebody wrote that on here. I don't know how old this piece is. I have no clue if it was maybe made for this seminar or something. It looks older. The piece itself kind of looks older to me. And I have half a hunch. Somebody maybe gifted this to somebody at that seminar or something. I have no idea. But it's really, really pretty. And it's, you know, um, to the best of my knowledge, I have found nothing that I'd consider any chips or cracks. There might be some slight like fading of some of the paint. You can kind of see it through there along the edges. It's a big piece. Um, it measures like eight and a half inches across. Yeah, it's, a, it's about eight and a half inches across. And the, and the lid, see the lid is more like yeah, the lid is easily nine inches across. So it's a really, really pretty piece. It's all blues and lavender and pink. And I thought it was just super, super pretty. Um, and I have to price up a little bit on it, but not, not what I think is unreasonable anyway. I would let this go for $20 if anybody's interested in this really pretty, large, big, lined, padded trinket type box if anybody's interested in this um my norton just popped up here ah so if anybody's interested in this beautiful box i'd let it go for 20 bucks um and i'm not making a huge amount of money on it doing that either i thought it was real pretty and i would call this god i didn't put any numbers on my sheet how about number five if anybody's interested in that beautiful large hand-painted trinket box for 25 or for twenty dollars put in number five one two three four five I'll call that large hand painted porcelain box maybe I don't know ceramic box Okay, and we'll just mark that so we can set that aside and bring it back later too. And if anybody, it, it's super, super pretty. I mean, look at it. You can see all the little dots and everything along all that painting. Pretty, pretty, pretty. I do have a few brooches, Denise, as a matter of fact. Hi, by the way, which I can show you. I wasn't as prepared as I thought I was going to be. I should have just put some in there. Eight, nine. Okay, let me see what I have for brooches. It's nice. It's very warm here right now. We've been hitting like in the high 80s, 90s. I think there was one day this week it was supposedly like 102 or something like that. But when it's like that, I'm either in my car. Um, I'm not really out in the elements. It's a little bit breezy here. But uh, I don't know what it's supposed to get up to today, but it's definitely warm. Okay, let's see what I have in here. I have for brooches. I have this really cute, where are you? Oh, you know what? Let me pin my email in here just real fast too. Because I always forget to do that. Okay, and then pin it, pin it, okay. There we go. There's my email up there too. So anybody um, that's new, if you haven't purchased from me, just send me your info. And I will probably invoice tomorrow and Monday and hopefully plan by shipping by Wednesday. Um, 
at first I thought that was going to be the one thing I was really going to have trouble motivating myself to do until I found pirate ship and they just make it so, so easy. Ooh, that's pretty cool. 70s. Nice. though. So. this is a really pretty little brooch. It looks like a reindeer. It is a reindeer, I would say. And it's, um, it's a gold tone, but he's got almost like some turquoisey kind of color coming through on him. And he's got that little red star. And then he's got the two gold tone stars that hang from there. Um, and his eye, is that a jewel? That looks like another little red kind of a jewel. I don't think there's, oh, there is a mark on here, but I can't read it. Oh, of course. Of course, let's see, where's, oh, here, I'm going to imitate somebody. Where's my loop? I wonder who that is. Will she recognize it? Where's my loop? <laughs> she knows who it is. Where's my loop? So I don't do it in, in the accents. Okay, this says ultra, God, I don't know. I think it says ultra craft, which I have no idea. So it's probably just some costume thing. Anyway, this is a li pretty, pretty little, probably should have saved this for Christmas. It's got the little, um, what kind of a clasp do you call that? The little thingy that sticks through, sticks in there. And then it comes out. Oh, I don't know what those are. And I can't see shit. Oh, there it is. Okay, it works. And then you've got the little thing that closes over it. Okay, so I have this very pretty little deer brooch. If anybody is interested in that, we will mark that $5, number six. Deer brooch. Very pretty. Very pretty little deer. That would be really nice during the holidays, especially with the little stars dangling off of it. Where's my loop? <laughs> it was because of you I bought a loop, by the way. Okay, and then I have... This is another really cute one. I actually have two of these. And I would probably say most of these brooches, I would go like $5 on them. This is a really cute one, also gold tone. Um, I don't see a mark on it that I can make out anyway. And it is so us because it's this gold tone lady and she's dressed so hot, hot, hot couture. Let me get that in there. And, oh, come on, get back in there. Well, Margaret would help if you put it in the right hole. That's what he said. Oh, come on. Where is it? There it is. Okay. So it's this lady, and she's shopping, and she's got all of her wonderful, beautiful bags. And she's got her dog. And her little doggie's down there, almost like he's tugging on one of her packages. You can see it's got like the, uh, he's got like his leash. Isn't this cute? Yes, please hit the like. She's absolutely adorable. Too neat brooch. Look at her, her hat, her packages, and her dog. I thought that she was totally cute. Anyway, so we'll, like I said, $5 on any of the brooches. So we'll mark her shopping lady brooch. Oh, oh, C-H. Okay, and I'll show one more brooch and then I'll go on to something else if nobody wants any of these brooches. I put him, where didn't I have her in? A, oh, there's her bag. Oh, and she was number, she was number seven. Number seven. <laughs> I have two of them, Linda. I can keep one. There's actually two of those. Um, so I snagged them both because I thought they were adorable. Shopping with your dog. I don't have a dog anymore, though, but I'm not going to get another dog, at least until my mom and I do this trip, probably in August. 
And originally, you know, we were talking, taking like a month and, and going to Iowa and visiting her family and everybody in Iowa, all my cousins I haven't seen in years. And but she's gotten concerned now that maybe she won't be able to keep up with me as much if we go exploring. And my daughter, Ellen, has kind of talked about going too. So I talked to her about it today and she's um, she works for her dad. So we're pretty sure we can arrange to take for her to take a month off and my mom could go back with me. And then if she doesn't feel like it, like exploring, um, then we'll put her on a plane and, and we can send her home. And I kind of feel bad about that, but she's like, no, I want you to go. She said, I, as long as you're healthy, you've got your health and you should, you should take off and do this trip and, and, and go explore. And cause there's a lot of the country I've never seen before. I'd like to go down to, you know, through, I think from Iowa, you can go down through Missouri and then south of Missouri is Arkansas. And then I don't know, I'll have to get the map out and look at everything from there. But I'd like to visit some of the south. I've never been through the south. So. Oh, that tastes so good. Okay. Let's see. I'll show one more brooch. And then I'll show something else if nobody likes my brooches. And this one, still again, $5. This one's a jeweled one. Um. And it's also gold tone, and it's got all of these really pretty sparkly jewels all through it. Kind of a amber color or topaz color and green and red. And opalescent ones are like um, Aurora Borealis kind of crystals all through there. It's really, really pretty. So if anybody likes this brooch, again, it would be $5.00. And we'll say this one is number 10. So we'll call this bling brooch. Number 10, $5. $5. Okay, so nobody wants the brooches. That's okay. We'll do brooches again another day. I'll put those aside for now, I think. Oh, maybe I could show. Do you want me to show you one more? We'll show this one. Oh, wait, what's that? Oh, how about, I was going to say this, though, a gold tone cowboy hat. Bad Boy Vintage wants number 10. Thank you, Brian. Yay. I'm so happy. And that was, where did I put it? Number 10 was the bling brooch. Okay. Let me put this on here. I think it's pretty. I've never been really a brooch girl, but. So I never know what to pick out. It came. We will put a little tag in there and we will set that one aside right there. And then, let's see. Let me see what else is in here. Oh, this one's kind of neat. Oh, I like this one too. I'm going to save those from when I do my Western thing. This one's a blingy one too. This one is purples and it's like a crescent moon, which I thought was really neat too. That could go in one of my witch boxes sometime these are all pretty good size ones too these aren't i've got one in the other room I'll br i'm not going to bring in today but where the heck i know i got it what i do with it i just measured this box oh my god i need somebody to babysit me what did i do with my measuring tape no that's not it oh my god i just had it don't make me go get my other one. Well, shoot. I'm always losing something. Well, I was going to measure this for you, but I'm not going to now. Unless I accidentally put it in there. No, no, I don't know what I did with it. I just had it when I measured. Oh, there it is. Ta-da! Okay. This is pretty. This is very pretty. Okay, so this is like two and a half about two and a half inches long this one and it's purple 
and it's a moon. It's a nice moon. Yeah, I think it's pretty too. So if anybody's interested in this pretty two and a half inch blingy purple half um, crescent moon, we'll say he's number four and five dollars. Oops. Crescent moon brooch. Number four. Five dollars. Okay. I'll put him back in here. I love all the colors. I like the purples. I like the purples. Purples are pretty. Okay, we'll just move on to something else then. So we've got the one brooch out, and we'll put these brooches back in here. Nobody wants the shopping lady with the dogs. I'm really surprised. I got a pumpkin, too, but I'm going to save those for a little bit. Okay. We have 11 people in here and eight thumbs up. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Let's see. How about... How about this pretty... Speaking of ladies walking things, look at this lady, I believe, is walking a deer. I think she's very pretty. She, there's a little bit of wear on the gold paint right around her rim. Obviously, she's old. She's made in Japan, not made in occupied Japan, just made in Japan. This looks like this stuff here is like it's in the glaze. It's just like bumps in the glaze kind of thing. It's nothing weird or freaky or... And she's just kind of plain on the back. She's got brownish hair, but look, she's got way too much rouge on. Look what she's done to her face. She's got way too much rouge on, but that's, you know, just how I guess they made things. It's a little, little bit of fading, again, you know, on the gold paint on her, but I think she's really neat. I liked her. And she has her deer. She's standing there in her nice woolly winter coat with her deer. She is... She's not tiny, tiny, but she's not large. She is six inches. She's about six inches tall overall. Yeah, six inches. And then with the deer, and no chips or cracks that I can see. This is something that looks like from a sticker. At her widest point, about oh, three, about three inches this way and six inches this way. She's made in Japan. And I really like her. She could stay in my collection anytime, but I will sacrifice her for $7 and she's number 11. Lady and dear. $7, number 11. You don't like the lady and the deer? I like the lady and the deer. I think she's super pretty. That's all right. I'm going to redo some of my cabinets anyway, and I'm totally happy to keep her. Or maybe show her again toward the holidays when people really like the deer. Oh, thank you, Brian. <laughs> I do have a couple of made and occupied Japan pieces. I'll see. Oh, I meant to pull those out. Okay, let me mark her for you also. Seven dollars. Okay, and she was number 11, right? Brian. Okay, I'm going to start just a little Brian pile. We'll put her there, and we'll put this. And we'll put them over here. Okay, I have... Let's see what else I have. I have some absolutely darling and these are not vintage by the way i don't know what they are but i thought they were cute and i couldn't resist them they are absolutely darling like anthropomorphic salt and pepper shakers of a birthday cake or a birthday cake this one's the birthday cake look here's the birthday cake look at her face look at her pretty lips this is her little top. I guess those are probably supposed to be candles. And it does say happy birthday on the top. Look how pretty she is. These are, these are totally in good shape. 
And then here's like the present. Does that one look more like a dude? That one could be the dude, and this one could be the chick. Or they could or be just anthropomorphic, whatever. Pretty blue bow. And this is kind of spotted with like, uh, the spots are kind of like a burgundy and a yellow. Aren't they cute? Little salt and pepper shakers. Let me see what the label says. I didn't even look at the labels. Probably China. Um... Just this clay art made in the Philippines. I believe that says the Philippines. They're really cute. They got a little CA on the bottom. They could be a little bit older than what I than what I think. I don't know. I have absolutely no idea. But I think these little happy birthday salt and pepper shakers with their cute little faces. Look at those faces. Oh, darling, absolutely darling. So I would let those go for $12, and we'll say those are number nine. Happy birthday, salt and pepper. I said 12, right? And they're number nine. I think they're really cute. Look at their faces. How can you reset? Oh, Diane, yay! <laughs> Yay! I will put those away for you. I think they're darling. Okay, let me mark those for you. That was number nine, right? Okay, so I don't screw anything up there. I will put those back over there. It was happy birthday, Diane. Hey, did I send you with your um, flower frog? Did you get a basalt? Did I remember to throw a basalt in there with that? I was a little bit perplexed on how I was going to package that because I, any of the boxes I found seemed too big for that one piece. I finally decided bubble wrap and an envelope. Okay, thank you. Thank you. These are all for you. Okay, so Diane gives us salt and pepper shakers. Okay, how about... Oh, here you go, Brian. Oh, wait a minute. I should show those salt and peppers first. This is... This is a... Made in Occupied Japan. One of these little small, like, Toby mugs. He's not very, he's small. He's only like three inches, a little over three inches at his high point. So he's, he's small, but he says, uh, made in occupied Japan. It's right down there. So if anybody's interested in my little, oh, is that a chip? No, I don't think that's a chip. It just looks like there's a little bit of paint. I mean, obvious paint wear, you know, from age on something like this. Like there's a little bit of paint wear, like right on the tips. And so if anybody, yeah, so you can kind of see it up there now. It doesn't look as, it looks bigger on the screen than it really does from down here. It's not a chip though. It's just somewhere on that paint. Look at his face. It's like he's going, ooh. This is lips kind of wearing off now. I don't know. He's got a little too much rouge on there, too. Look at him. So if anybody's interested in that little little miniature made in occupied Japan Toby mug, I would let him go for $6 and he's number 12. Toby mug, $6. Number 12. Number 12. Number 12 for the Toby mug. For the little maiden occupied Japan Toby mug. Oh, thank you. I knew you would do that. <laughs> Brian, you're spoiling me. <laughs> okay. Toby mug. That goes to Brian also. And that's uh, $6. Number 12. Okay, we'll put this with Brian's stash over here. Nobody likes that big trinket box thing, huh? I'm trying to learn to junk draw. Oh, my God. You know what? 
there's a gal who's got a booth at the antique mall in Carson City who does junk journaling and she sells them and hers are small. They're probably, I mean, they're not, they're probably maybe like a, oh, a five by seven kind of a size and they're beautiful. They're absolutely beautiful. And she's, but, and I looked at one the other day and I thought about buying one, but the, she wanted like $35 for it. And I wasn't going to spend $35 on a little junk journal like that. I just don't get into all the hobby stuff. That's almost like, you know, I kind of like this business end of things. Oh, and I started to tell you earlier, I was really dreading the whole shipping thing until I found pirate ship. I thought that was going to be the one thing that might just deter me from wanting to do any of this. Uh, but pirate ship has been great. It's so freaking helpful. Um, but uh, the jungle thing, I don't know. I think it's beautiful, but I don't have the patience. Excuse me. Oh, okay. Let's see. How about another set of salt and pepper shakers? These are not vintage either, but they're absolutely adorable. And I imagine they're probably just made in China, yes. Let's see what the bottom of this one says. It says, it says, don't break me. It says Westland, made in China, Westland. But look, do you guys know anybody? Do you know any bikers? Who that felt? Did I feel something there? No, I don't feel it. Because these are the, um, look, these are the magnetic ones. So they're kissing. So I've got biker salt and pepper shakers. These were actually in a box. Um, <clears throat> But the box was really trashed, and so I just, I took the box, I just threw the box away. I can pack them better and in a nicer, a better box than that. Anyway, so I have these biker, if you know some bikers that you'd like to give some salt and pepper shakers to, or if you are a biker, and they're kissing, their magnets work really well. They These are new. They've never been used. They both have their, oh no, this one's actually missing her stopper. I didn't notice that. So he's got his, but she's missing hers. I don't know if it's laying over here. No, I don't see it. Okay, so we've got one missing stopper. Anyway, if you'd like the biker salt and pepper shakers, um, I would say let those go for $10 and let's call them number eight. And I said 10, right? Yeah. Okay. Number eight, $10. Biker salt and pepper shakers are adorable. Their magnets work really good. She's just missing her stopper. I really thought they were both there, too. Because they were in, the, well, maybe that's, I don't know. Like I said, the box was kind of trashed. If I locate the shaker I would or the, the stopper, if anybody bought these, I would definitely, you know, put it in there. But if not, that's okay. I can show them another time. Or if anybody watches this video later on, you know, anything that you see that didn't sell, and if you're interested in it, just email me because we'll take care of that. I am totally happy to do that because I know people are out there doing all kinds of other sales. Okay, so how about, how about, are you guys interested? And I could save these for when I do my Western sale too. Did you guys watch my, I, it wasn't very good. I didn't get close enough and, and I hate that stupid phone. I got to get a new phone. Did you watch my video with the wild horses? Because last week I was down, when I, while I was down at the flea market, there's this guy that's got all this wild horse photography. And so I stopped and talked to him and I asked him, I said, so who's the photographer? He said, I am. And his name is Philip Adams, Nevada Wilds Photography. So I bought four of these smaller pieces. They're like, um, oh, what would those be? Three by fives? I think they're three by fives and like a four by six probably. Yeah, three and a half. It looks like about three and a half on the picture. They could be four by sixes. They're just matted. Well, it's a little more than five inches on this too. I'll bet these are like four by sixes. The, well, yeah, the matting is a seven inch, seven long. 
and five down. So this is like a five by seven matting. So they're probably four by sixes. And I tried to find ones like this is the mommy and the baby. So I have that one. I have this one of the three horses. And these are all horses that live out here. He photographs everything out here and he also, you know, has bigger pieces, but I went ahead and just got these smaller ones. I said, let me see if anybody's interested in these and how I do with these first. And if they're interested in any of this other wild horse photography, then, you know, I'll come back and, and find you. I've got his card with his number and everything too. He's got his sticker on the back of each one that has his name. And this is another one of a mommy and a baby. Aren't they beautiful? And then I have one more, another, it's the buckskin and her baby. Look at this. So these are, these are matted um, in, in five by seven. They're four by six. It looks to me like they're four by six photos in a five by seven type of mat. I did measure that about five by seven, right? Yeah. And if anybody's interested in these, um, I would just go $5 a piece on them. And you can pick the one you want. Um, we'll call these like number 13 and you tell me which one or two or whichever one you like and I'll put your name on it. They're very nice and they're matted very well. Each one of them is in their own separate little uh, envelope. I have books, just love kink, kink knacks, oh, knick knacks more. Oh, <laughs> this is kink. <laughs> Aren't these neat? Don't you love the, well, I love the wild horses. I was looking at some more coming back from Reno today and thinking, oh, I, you know, I wish I could get a little bit closer. I need to just get rid of this Android, this Android phone I've got. I think I've had for about four or five years. It's time to retire it and get one with a better camera on it. Aren't they gorgeous? These are our wild horses out here in Nevada. And this guy goes out and exclusively pretty much photographs them. Okay. Anyway, I thought you guys might enjoy some of these. And again, if anybody does, you know, they're not framed, but they are matted. Look at this one. He's eating from mommy. Isn't that gorgeous? Nicely matted. Anyway, you can always email me later, too, if you think you might like these. I think they're just wonderful. And if not, hey, I'm happy to keep these, too. I've just got to find some room in my house. Okay, how about... Um, birds. How about these pretty little clear glass birds of clarity, we'll call them. And they're sitting on this night, this nice, uh, yes, thank you. Uh, they're sitting on this nice dark, you know, it's a black glass tree branch. It's got a pretty little pink rose in here with a leaf. I don't see any injuries to it. Um, of course, there's no signature on this piece of any kind. So, But I thought it was really pretty for those of us that like the birds. See, I don't think there's anything. No, I don't see it. Looks like any petals or anything broken off of that. So they're clear birds and they're with the, with the pink rose and they're sitting on this black tree branch and they're about, this is a nice little piece actually. I haven't felt, the beaks feel like they're, the beaks, the tails, everything's okay. Um, looks like about five inches, just under five inches maybe um, tall. And then the width is right around four or a little under four. Now let's see what it measures from this side, from this piece. I know I can't get enough of the knickknacks. So I've got to stop for a while. I do. I keep saying that and I don't do it. Yeah, three and a half, four inches, somewhere in that area, depending on how you do it. Very pretty. We'll call those birds of clarity. I don't know. I can't think of anything else creative. If anybody is interested in my beautiful little birds of clarity, we'll say they're number one and let's go $8 on those. Birds on branch. 
and it's number one. Number one, Birds of Clarity, $8. Oh, Kristen, yay. I think they're really pretty. Kristen D. Kristen. And eight bucks. Okay. Yeah, if you get any more purple suede purses before you put them on, send me a picture and see if I want it. There's been, there was another one you did one day too. And I think it was, was it a Michael Kors maybe? That was a purple suede. I like suede. I know a lot of people don't like suede because it can look kind of funny and it doesn't always photograph all, but I'm a suede person. If I'm buying my boots, I went looking for new boots again the other day and I want some brown boots, but I went to the boot barn and all they had were the regular leather. I want suede. I'm looking for, for some nice suede. I like my suede. Oh, you want the, the motorcycles too? Cool. Let me grab them. Let me grab them and put your name on them before I screw up. Okay, and that will be Kristen also. What was that number? Let me find them. Um, doing the bikers. Eight. Number eight. Ten. Cool. Okay. I'm running out of room here, so I'm going to go set these on my table in my other room. And I'll be right back. Is Pat here? Hi, Pat. Hi. <laughs> Where are you? So how far were you? You were in Georgia this morning. How far is that from home? Oh. Well, I'm glad you popped in. I know. It's, 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 is that my message? I've got a friend coming out too, who's going to go karaoke with me tonight. I'll tell you about in a minute. Let me go set these down real quick so I have some room. Okay, and I need to check this message really, really quick so I can see when she's coming out. She is, um, <clears throat> she works as an attache during the legislature. I'll be on my way in about an hour. Perfect. She's got to come in from Carson City. She actually lives in Vegas. But during the legislative session, um, she's an attache for her. She used to be an attache for my very, very wonderful friend, Mark Menendo, who is no longer um, a state senator. And the last couple of sessions, she worked for another senator. His name's Mo Dennis. He uh, got into the term limits, got him this time. So this was his last term. But because of COVID, they wouldn't let lobbyists into the building all session until like the last week of session, about the last five days, they started a lot allowing lobbyists in if you could prove you were vaccinated or someplace across the street, they had some type of a station where you could go get one of those quick COVID tests. So if you had the results and you were negative of COVID, then they'd let you in the building. And at that point I was like, I'm not even going to mess with that. So I didn't. Anyway, so serious session was over. Uh, when was it? Last Sunday night? I think it was last Sunday. Last Sunday or Monday night, it was it was the last day of session. So it's over there in the interim now until February of 2023. And before Syria goes back to Vegas, um, she's going to come out and spend at least tonight with me and maybe tomorrow too before she heads back to Vegas. So because we did, she's a very good friend and I haven't got to spend any time with her. So I'm really glad she got a hold of me and said, Anyway, and then the guy who usually does karaoke isn't doing karaoke tonight because his girlfriend's mother passed away, I guess, last night. So he's going to stay with her. But they've got somebody else coming in to do karaoke. So we're still going to go party. Okay. Yes. And I think Brenda's coming out tonight, too. She's supposed to. Brenda's having hip surgery Thursday. She's uh, getting her, she's already had one hip done. Now she's getting her other hip done. So this is going to be her last party night for a while. And yesterday she was talking about bailing and not going out tonight. And I'm like, no, you're getting, you're going to go out and party tonight. So 
We're going to whoop it up. You've got to come out tonight. So she's supposed to meet us there, too. Okay, let's see. What else do I have? How about... Is anybody interested in some James Bond vintage ephemera? Bond Girls 007 playing cards. Look at... And these are the Bond Girls. It's they, The cards have never been opened. Now, there is a barcode on here, so I don't know. Uh, but they've never been opened from the plastic. Look. That one is Honey Rider... Ursula Andres. I used to call her Ursula Andres, but I'm not going to open this because it's sealed. See, it's still got that thing around it. I'm not going to break that seal on this at all. Yeah, Brenda, Brenda can be fun, um, but she's had some issues. So she goes Thursday to get her hip done. So she's going to be out of commission for a while. But I'm going to try to get her in here, at least when she starts feeling better. She's all nervous about the pain. I'm like, you know, you need to remember that this pain is going to be, this is your healing pain now. You get this hip done, this pain is going to be nothing compared to what you've been going through for the past few years on this hip. So just like when I had my knees done, but my knee, oh, that knee surgery is awful it is just brutal but it's it, it's been a year for me a little over a year now since I had the second one done and I had my knees done three months apart um so you've got it shows the bond girls oh that's something in Spanish that I can't read featuring 55 original photographs of the bond girls from 1962 to 2012 so I don't know who all of them are. It does show that Ursula Andres is the one, the honey writer. And then on here, it's got, I can't read that. Somebody from 2012, I can't read. Somebody else from Goldfinger. Somebody Masterson from 1964. It, her last name was Eaton, it looks like. See, they don't tell you on here who all of them are. But this is in really good shape. Yeah. It's like she's going to do her physical. Th she's like, I, I said, do, are you going to do your physical therapy in Carson City? That's where I did mine at the Reno Orthopedic Clinic. They've got a um, an office in Carson. She's, no, I've already done physical therapy on the one. I know what to do. So she's not planning on going to physical therapy, which is too bad because I really, really enjoyed my physical therapy. Anyway. Um, so I've got the Bond Girls 007 cards. Um, if anybody's interested in these, I'm not sure what I'd have to go on these. Um, totally unopened on this. I th I'm thinking like, you know, 12 bucks and we'll call those number two. I think I've put these up before and I don't remember. I think, I think I've looked these up and it seems to me like $12 is pretty reasonable for this set of cards. Totally unopened Bond Girls. Okay. I think they're cool. Bond Girl playing cards. If you like all the pinup and that kind of stuff, this is something I need to get Vinny to look at. How about... How about... What have I got over there? Stuff. I have stuff. How about... How about a wooden mermaid? She's in very nice shape. She looks like she was, you know, one of those that's designed on a ship. I think she's made in the Philippines also. And she's in good shape. She's made to look kind of distressed. Look at 11 people and 12 thumbs up. That's perfect. I love it. Here's the back. The back is just plain. She's really cute. She could be really cute in a, in a bathroom with like some um, chalkware fish. She's wood. She's wood. She's got the little hanger on the back right here and the sticker that says made in the Philippines. She's in really nice shape. She's got a little bit of paint. Not, not really a chip, but where, like I said, she's got that distressed look. To me, she doesn't look like she's, I, you know, she's deliberately made to look distressed. Anyway, and she's good size, too. She is, well, not huge by any means, of course, but um, like about 10 inches long. 
and then from her head down to there, it's about four and a half inches. Do you guys like her? Does anybody like her? I will tell her that, Brian. So if anybody's interested in this pretty wooden mermaid, um, I'd let her go for like, oh, what do I want to let her go for? <sighs> Can't be too cheap. Seven dollars, number three. Wood mermaid. Seven dollars. I think she's adorable. Number three. Number three for the wooden mermaid. She's darling. I like her. I like anything though. She'd even look good. She might look good on my wall. Oh, Julie Schwartz. <laughs> you like my mermaid? I was ready to keep her. <laughs> I was ready to keep her. Oh, I see Julie first, Kristen. I hope you do too. <laughs> Julie Schwartz. Okay. How are you, Julie? Did you just get here? Have you been in here for a while? Cool. Thanks, Kristen. Oh, my shirt's done in there. I should go change and put on my shirt. I spilled stuff on it at lunch, so I had to wash it because I want to wear it out tonight. Okay. So we'll set that one over there. Let's see. What time is it anyway? Oh, we're good. Okay. How about... Does anybody like Treasure Craft? Does anybody in here like Treasure Craft? I like the idea of putting her in the bathroom, too. That's exactly what I was thinking. I have the Treasure Craft salt and pepper shakers. They are owls. And they're from Monterey, California. You see them? Now, this one's got his cork stopper. This one does not have the cork stopper, but those cork stoppers, you can replace those really easily. Um, and I, I don't know if I've got any Treasure Craft fans in here, but I have been here, but the mermaid is the first thing I bought today. Did you say something? Because did I neglect to say hi to you? <laughs> I don't want to neglect to say hi to anybody. If I do, you know, scream loud because I get distracted, especially when I'm doing all this other stuff. So be sure, you know, don't let me ignore you. Because I have a tendency to get off on all this stuff and thinking too much too much at once. Oh, there's old Curtis walking down. The, he's not old. Curtis, Curtis is a, he was a kind of a friend of Bill's. And he lives a few blocks away and always walks up this gully area that's on this, uh, by my house. It's filled by my house. Okay, good. I wanted to be sure I didn't ignore you because I don't mean to if I do. So if you like Treasure Craft, this is the Monterey, California one with the owls. If you like Treasure Craft owls or co collect the Treasure Craft, they're in good shape. Um, I don't see any, any chips or cracks or anything on them other than the fact that um, the one is missing his cork stopper. But that's, that's, to me, no big deal. I don't know how many people actually would use these anyway. You just use them for display. Um, anyway, so if you like these little treasure craft owls, I would let these go for, let's say $9 and they would be number 13 treasure craft owls, number 13, $9. Oops. Let me set them down. $9 treasure craft. Treasure craft owls. Okay. What was that? Number 13 for the Treasure Craft Owls. I can always bring these back another time too. Or you can email me after after my show. Okay, so we'll put those down. And how about... How about some Jazzy Martini glasses? I have absolutely no clue who makes these. They have like an orangey, a deep orangey um, colored with the, with, with the bubbles on the bottom. They've got a totally clean kind of pentol or whatever that was called. I hope I said that right. Kristen, 30, oh, cool. Thanks, Kristen. I'll mark those for you. 
treasure craft. Okay, cool. I'm glad, I'm glad to let those go. I'm glad those are finding a new home in New York. Nine dollars. And that's number 13. Okay. And I'm going to go put those real fast in there with your other little goodies. Monterey, California. Okay, I'm coming. I'm coming. Uh, okay, so these beautiful. What are you talking about? On loan for what? What are you talking about? Oh, online for. I don't know. I'm off in La La Land. Okay, so I have two of these really pretty martini glasses. I guess you could do something else in them. It wouldn't have to be a martini, but that's the first thing I can think of putting in there is some nice, some good vodka, even just like some gray goose. How do you say it? The French way. Gray goose la horon. La horon. I can't say it. Never mind. La orange. On the rocks. Or you do a regular, like a nice vodka with some olives and what is it for a dry one you put in like some white vermouth or something like that i think these are neat they're very clean they're in good shape they've got the little bubbles this one looks like it's got a little bit of a bubble right down here and i looked these up online too i actually googled these so i'm gonna go if anybody's interested in these beautiful Wonderful. I'm sure that's not Murano. It does look like it's kind of um, um, controlled on the bubbles, but I'm sure it's not Murano. Who knows who makes those? This one looks like it's got a little bit of a bubble right in the glass, but there's no chips or anything on them. They're really clean, really fun little martini type glasses. Um, I'm going to say $12 at number 15. Vodka watermelon. Ooh. $12, number 15, martini glasses. I think they're neat. I would even drink a margarita out of them. I don't know what else you could drink out of them, something else. I think they need to be something. Well, you could chill them. You wouldn't have to have it on the rocks. You could probably chill them. So whatever you poured in there, you just drink straight up. I think they're really neat. And they're not, uh, they're not dinky, dinky little ones like shot glasses either. These are like five inches tall. And the actual drinking part is like three and a quarter. And then they're like four inches across almost. So they're not dinky. This is, this is like perfect, perfect sipping something. Get a good buzz. You wouldn't need much. <laughs> I think these are neat. Okay. And let's do this now. I'm running out of room on this one. It was 15. Okay. Let's just go this route then. Oh, and Julia Schwartz got the mermaid, right? Okay, how about, how about, I don't know, I have so, so much stuff here. Does anybody want glass or do you want to look at pottery? This is um, a Shawnee rooster. Does anybody like Shawnee? This is a good sized guy. He's a Shawnee rooster, a uh, planter. Very clean, no chips or cracks. Um, I don't even see any extreme crazing on this one, but it is, it's marked Shawnee, Shawnee USA number 503, it says on the bottom. And he's just kind of a 
just kind of a, the glaze is just kind of like a, an ivory and almost a brownish kind of a beige. Yep. Yep. Nice, nice Shawnee rooster planter. And if anybody's interested in my Shawnee rooster planter, I have a Shawnee deer too, but I'm going to have to go higher on him. I would let my Shawnee rooster go for 15 and we'll just call him number 15, I think. Nope, I already did 15. We'll do 14. He's number 14 for the Shawnee rooster. E -E rooster. 15. If anybody's interested in him, and you can always email me later. I thought it was nice, too, for a nice piece of Shawnee. You don't see out here, you don't, I mean, the few pieces of Shawnee I've tried to barter with, I had one guy that just was not going to budge on his Shawnee one day. He was at a flea market, that flea market in Fallon, and I spotted two pieces of Shawnee, and I went over to talk to him about it, and he was like, oh, no, those aren't even supposed to be there. I'm not selling those. I'm like, gee, thanks. I'm a Shawnee rooster. He'd be very pretty with a look. Look, we'll take that out, out of the man toy, the man tool. Look, and, and during the holidays, you could put a, bo a bottle brush tree in there. <laughs> okay, fine. We'll stick that back in the man tool, which I still have sitting here. See, the man tool. Okay, Shawnee Rooster. How about a very pretty little, I don't know what to call this. This isn't cranberry. This is almost, I think, like a black amethyst almost. It's got a, a flat, clean, is it pentel? Am I saying that right? Pentel? And it's like, it's almost like a, an, an amethyst, but it's so dark. I guess it could be an amethyst glass. Maybe not black amethyst, but like an amethyst glass. Really, really pretty little vase. It is approximately five inches tall. And probably, you know, it's always kind of hard to measure these. If you go this way. Here, five inches, about five inches tall. It's heavy, too. This is a nice one. Pontil. Did I say that right? Pontil? Pontil. And about three inches across, if we go from, like, there to there. Really, really pretty. No chips or cracks. I, I don't know what to call this. If it is, you know, amethyst glass, I don't know. It's almost a dark purple black. You can see the purple. It's not like, it's not like a like a um, burgundy, kind of like the cranberry glass. This is more of almost a, if it is cranberry, it's a dark, deep, blackish cranberry. Um, I'm sure it's not flash. Well, I think you can kind of tell by the pontil. Is that right? <laughs> anyway, if you like this pretty little blackish purple vase, I think this is really pretty. And it's, not, it's got good weight to it. It's not too heavy, but it's not thin by any means. I have no idea. It does have a little bit of like, I don't know if that's chipping on the bottom, like right around, can you see right around here? But it's not like it's chipping to where it's like white underneath or, or a clear glass underneath. I, I'm, I don't think it's any kind of flash pretty sure it isn't. Yeah, it's it's really, really pretty. Um, anyway, I'd let this pretty little amethyst, whatever it is, blackish amethyst vase. Um, if you like him, I will let him go for $10 and he's number 20. $10, number 20, A-M-E-T-H-Y-S-T, or is it I-S-T? Amethyst vase, and he's number twenty. If anybody's interested in him, otherwise, he can he can very easily stay at my house because I think he's beautiful. I think he's just this is just a pretty pretty vase, pretty 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 little vase. Okay, I also have. Let's see, what do I want to show? How about? 
How about this really cute, I don't know if this is cast iron, wrought iron, I don't know. It's a, um, a napkin holder. And it seems like it does have, it. oh, it's Taiwan, so it's not real old. And I don't know whether it's cast iron or wrought iron because I don't know how to tell the difference. It does have this little like an adjustment screw in the back so that you can adjust, I guess, um, you know, how deep you want your napkins in there. I'm assuming it's a napkin holder unless you can think, of, you know, I'm sure you could put something else in there. And it looks like a teapot. It looks like this is probably maybe some paint over the iron, whatever this is, uh, in the front that makes it look like it's a deep brownish, almost a black, but not quite. I have not tried this little screw back here. I think this is really cute though. Um, and it's in really nice shape. You can see the Taiwan, you can see the wrought iron or cast iron or whatever it is in the back. Um, and, and of course the little screw. And it is from the tip of the teapot shape to the base is right around five inches and then across, I, mean, I guess it's probably close to the same. Yeah, about four and a half. Um, and like I said, I have not attempted to do anything with this screw, but I think it's a really cute little piece, little nice metal piece. It's not real, it's not super, super heavy, but it's absolutely heavy. I mean, it definitely has some weight to it. And so I would let this cute little um, teapot, wrought iron, cast iron, whatever it is, napkin holder, I'm assuming, um, go for $8 and we'll call this number 16. Uh, napkin holder. Eight dollars. I think it's neat. I think it's really, really neat. I think it's cute. But you know what? I can always bring it back to like when I do my Western theme thing, which I'm going to do someday. Someday. Okay. No interest on him. We'll stick him back over here in the corner. And I have I also have this and this is a brass um, I don't know like a towel holder I guess now somebody did obviously take it off a wall that had painted it pink because uh, there's some pink paint back here on it but it's a hand it's really pretty. It's brass and it's a hand holding like some roses. And I'm surprised I haven't kept this. Hi, Jose. How are you? So, and, and this is a really pretty, like a um, towel hook or something for another nice thing for an about, I'm, you know what, if nobody buys this, I'm just going to hang this in one of my bathrooms because I think this is, this is neat. This is wonderful. This is like, um, oh, Come on, open up. So it's about from the tip, if you come down to say like here, oops, is seven. So if you went down to, let's say, you know, to the middle of the base, probably about eight inches. Um, and it's really pretty. For drapes, okay. Isn't it neat? I think it's neat. I And I love the brass. I love finding the brass. Well, it's too bad I didn't find two of them then, huh? I never thought about that. Too bad. I think it probably is, too, with the pink paint on it. Somebody painted a pink wall. I imagine you can probably get that off, but I'm not going to be the one to try to do that. So, And it's it's got good weight to it, too. This is a nice piece. I don't know if there's anything written in it. Um, I don't see a mark inside it anywhere. No. No. Anyway, if anybody's interested in this pretty, this very pretty brass hand, I would let it go for $12 and it's number 17. Brass 
and I don't know, holder. Number 17, $12. I think it's gorgeous for the brass. That's not a bad price when we're talking brass either these days. I've got some, oh God. I got something I'm not going to sell you yet, yeah, but I'll show you. Um, where do I have room for him? I think that one's great with the brass. Did you see my latest ashtray? Brass. I had to really pay up on these guys too, though, so I'm not ready to sell them yet. They're gonna, they're just gonna stay and let me enjoy them for a while. See, so his shell comes off, and he's got the little thing in the back, so it can actually hold like two cigarettes back there. I looked these up too, and it's somewhere around 1940 um, that these were made. I don't think there was any kind of a mark on them. I didn't even look, but I have been looking, scoping on these guys for a while and they had them marked pretty high. And I finally went in and said, okay, would she go down to blah, 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 which was still high. And they went ahead and, and did it and sold them to me. So I'm going to hang on to them and enjoy them for a while. But aren't they cute? I think they are. Look at, look at, you can tell that he's the male too. She's got eyelashes. If you look at him real close when you bring him up, she's got eyelashes. He doesn't. Do you see that? In the detail on these guys, and this little fornicating turtle ashtray. I think it's darling. I think it's darling. And then I also picked this up and I had to pay up on this one too. And the guy didn't want to budge. And this is a, uh, um, Marvel Mystery Oil. I thought it would go really good. In fact, I thought, you know what I should do is, because I had to pay up on this. Seriously, I had to pay up for this tin. And if somebody bought the tin, I would throw in the man tool. Is that what I call it? Yeah, the man tool. I could throw in the man tool if somebody bought the tin. Um, it says... Marvel Mystery Oil Top Cylinder Lubrication um, Reinforced Lubrication. It's Emerald Manufacturing Company, Inc., 242 West 69th Street, New York. It says, I can't read that. All for one, one for all. For transmission for crankcase, for springs, for motor valves. Marvel Mystery Oil, honestly so, honestly so, trademark, uh, one quart contents. And then there, of course, is all kinds of other stuff on the back. But I, again, I had to pay up on, on this thing. So, um, I'd have to go, I still have to go like $45 on this if anybody's really seriously interested in it. And if you were seriously interested in it for the 45, look how great it is. This is another one I have been, I have been really watching for a while and I tried to make a, a lower offer on it and couldn't get them to budge on it. Marvel Mystery Oil. But if you were seriously interested in it, you know, like I said, I'd have to go at least 45 on it. Um, and, uh, if you don't want to commit here, I'd call it number 18. If you do want to commit right now and I'd throw in the man tool, the, the thing there. So, you know, if you're seriously interested in it, uh, otherwise this can stay in my collection to 45, 45 Marvel in mystery oil. I mean, how cool is this can? This is the kind of stuff I go back and forth and back and forth. And I go to the antique mall and I look at it and three months later, it's still there and they won't budge. They won't come down, you know. Sometimes I'm like, well, it's been here for a while. And they, they still don't want to budge. Okay, how about a piece of fountain? I have a really pretty... It's uh, like the carnival colored cranberry um, and it's March Fenton. It's got the mark on the bottom and it is the grape one, which I know is pretty popular. Um, the color is very pretty on this. 
it's super, super pretty on this. Um, and it's a nice little bowl. It measures six, six across. And it's like, let's see, deep. We would go about two and a half inches deep. Very, very pretty Fenton. Look at the color. The color is like that reddish, reddish orangey. It's not an orangey orangey. It's got a lot of red in it. And uh, I think it's a pretty, pretty bowl. So if anybody's interested in this beautiful Fenton bowl, I would let it go for $12 and it's number 19. Fenton Carnival Glass Bowl, number 19, $12. Fenton Carnival Glass Bowl, number 19. No, it's Fenton. It's beautiful. Look at it. It's gorgeous, I think, anyway. Okay, if you change your mind, if you change your mind, you can email me. And then I also have this Fenton basket I picked up at the flea market last week, too. And I actually paid a little more for this than I did for the bowl. The only thing on it, it's nothing that I feel is, it's almost got like the edges kind of around the basket are kind of rough. I don't, I don't call that. I don't know what to call that. It's not like it's cracked or chipped or anything, but the edges are kind of rough around here. I thought so too. This is also Fenton. It has the Fenton, uh, I'm pretty darn sure. Yes. Be sure I'm not lying to you. Yes, that's Fenton. See, it says Fenton on the bottom, too. See if I can bring it in enough. This is kind of a opalescent, um, what do I want to call this? Iridescent, almost a lavender bluish. It's very pretty. It's very, very pretty. It's in very pretty shape. And other than that, kind of where it's rough around those edges there, um, there's nothing Bites, maybe? Is that what you call it, Julie? Is it's got like little flea bites, but they're all around it. Like all around the edges of it. It's super, super pretty. I mean, the, those little rough edges are nothing that I would call. I guess it could be like flea bites. See, right here is one. You could almost take like a, um, like one of those glass nail files and almost go around and smooth some of that. But it's nothing that's uh, like cracked or chipped or anything. It's super, super pretty. Can you see the color on that? It's almost like this bluish lavender iridescent. It's a very pretty Fenton basket. And we'll call this number 22. And if you're interested in it, it's $18. Fenton basket. I think it's super pretty, and I don't think $18 is too much to ask for that either for Fenton. It's really nice, really, really pretty. I just don't have all my glass people in here. Julie Schwartz, thank you, Julie. I will gladly send you this beautiful piece of Fenton. I think it's great. When I run into Fenton like this, I'm like, oh, and, and I, when it becomes affordable, too. So many people know what these things are these days. I love the color, too, and they jack this stuff up. Julie Schwartz, 18. And that was, would I mark that one? Number 22. Okay. Okay, we're going to set that one aside over here so nothing happens to him, her. She's too pretty to be a him. How about a big leather horse? I was going to actually save him for my Western. How about a big leather horse? But he's, he, I have to go like 20 bucks on too. But if you're interested in this beautiful, he's leather. But I think he had, I think the only thing with him is that he probably, um, in doing some research on him, maybe had a saddle at one time. I don't know. I can't tell for sure. But this, uh, but he's he's beautiful leather leather colored horse. I don't know a covered horse. His little ears down there. He's got a he's got his rein. I guess he's in good shape. 
Oh, no, he's got a little nick out here. It looks like it's not really a nick. It's just kind of worn on the leather, I guess. I don't know how you guys feel about stuff like this. So you have to tell me what you want to look for, too. I know this is a big change from going from a, a beautiful fit and bowl to this leather horse, but I think he's neat. And if anybody's interested in him, you know, email me or, you know, tw I'd have to go. I have to go like 20 bucks on him because they made me pay up on him, too. And he'd be number 21 for the leather horse. Leather. Leather horse. Number 21. I'm going to say 20 bucks on him. And that doesn't, I mean, really, I'm, I'm not really making any money on him either. Okay, well, let's see. So I did that, Fenton. I did that. How about, how do you guys feel about um, Murano? What is he filled with? Nothing that I can tell, Julie. He's like, he's solid. See, he's like solid. Can you hear me knock on him? I have no idea. I can just tell you, I can tell you he's leather clad, but that's about all I can tell you. And and I've seen these. I remember seeing these throughout the years, too. Um, I have no idea, Julie, if there's anything in there, if he's just, you know, like leather paper mache or something. And, and it's not like it's paper mache like that. I have no idea. What about the eyes glass? The eyes glass. What, on the horse or the eyes glass? I don't think so. I don't know. Let's look. Let's look closer at that. Let's examine that. You know what? Sure could be. Certainly could be. Let me see if I can bring him closer. Can you see is They certainly could be. I can't really tell by... It could very well could be. You see? Yeah, I don't know. I have absolutely no clue. And my eyes are not good enough to really get up there and look at that. But, you know, they're not. They're, they're kind of shiny. I don't know what else they would be. I guess they could be some kind of a marble or a, because they almost look marbly. I guess they could be some kind of a plastic, but I don't know. And I don't think he's got any markings on him. I've looked pretty good. I just like them. See this leg. Let me look at this leg. See, some of you can see where the leather is kind of starting to peel a little bit but not bad if you look are they yeah see i don't know i have no idea yeah we'll just we'll just put him set him aside unless somebody's any if anybody's really sincerely interested in him uh you know email me and we'll see what we can work out because he is neat i like him he just sits down here on my floor so I picked up at the flea market last week also, along with those two pieces of Fenton, um, this basket, and it does have the Murano sticker. You can, oh, where is it? Right here. It does have the Murano sticker on it. Let's see. There it is. And it's in really good shape. Um, it's very clean. It's got... Um, all these different colors, kind of green and blue and pink variegated, kind of rainbowish. Hello, Tanya. It is very pretty, isn't it? It's it's a nice size. It's not small, but it's not huge. Um, it looks like it stands about... Uh, around seven-ish. Tall, could be a little could be a little more and then it measures from the middle to here it measures like six if you go from like just this piece of glass to this piece of glass is six but if you go from 
let's go this way end to end like here if we go across is nine inches this way um so that would be about the same so what did i say seven like seven by nine it's really pretty it's kind of fragile through there i don't think my mom had that and it's beautiful when she passed away my naughty brother took it oh that you know what i have a naughty brother too and i'm hesitant to give him things um because he and his wife um throughout the years have had financial difficulties and there are so many things that my mother has given them nice pieces of jewelry and stuff that she's passed down that have ended up in, in pawn shops. And so I'm like, no, you know, I mean, some things I don't care about, but if it was something that was my grandmother's, my mother's, you know, family heirloom types of things that have been passed down, those are things that, you know, I'd have to get really, really, really desperate to start hawking anything that was my grandmother's. It would just break my heart and or my mom's. You have three brothers that are all great, or the, or the, besides the naughty brother, or you have three uh, pieces of Murano. <laughs> anyway, this is a really pretty piece of Murano. Um, um, and I have to go up a little bit on it though too, but it is Murano. It, look, there's even like little bubbles throughout here if you look really, really close. So um, this and it's got the Murano sticker. So if you like Murano glass and you like this piece of Murano, um, I'd have to go 25 on it and it would be number 23, Murano basket. 25. You know, one of these days we're going to get enough people in here that I'm going to get really gutsy and do an offer up. So far, I haven't even attempted one of those, but... This is a beautiful piece of Murano, 25, number 23. Look at this. I feel so lucky when I find stuff like this that I can actually bring on in and do a resale on it. Yeah, I, I've even got some things right now since my sister passed away. And, you know, the the day after she passed away and we all met over at our house, my mother's saying, well, this is supposed to go to so-and-so and this is supposed to go to so-and-so. That's all right. You know what? If you, um, thank you. Thank you, um, Tanya. If, if, you know, later on and you decide, you know, anything that doesn't sell, anybody comes back and watches my channel um, or watches this show, this sale and anything that hasn't sold, which is quite a list today, but um, that's okay because, you know, I'll just keep bringing things back. Uh, you can always email me later too. You can always e email me later because I'm, I'm totally happy to do that. And I pin, pinned my email address up there. I mean, I, you know, sometimes I'm hesitant, but this, this piece, you know, I just can't go any lower than that on this piece of Murano. Not for that one. Okay, what time is it? What have I got? About a half an hour. That was really nice of them because, you know, um, I haven't been in to see them for a while. So that was really, really nice of them. I need to go see them too. Sometimes, sometimes so, you know, schedules just don't correlate or coordinate. So let's see. Well, anybody have, how about, this is a great piece. I've got a couple more pieces I'll show you. This is, actually, let me, 28, 20. I need to put some more numbers on here. This is, this is, I can't read the whole thing because part of the label is off on, oh, it shows it's, I think it says Onyx, something Onyx, Tales Tecali, Puebla, Mexico, and it's it's supposed to be a carved on um, onyx. I'm going to assume it's a donkey. I don't think it's a horse. It could be a horse, uh, but I think it's a it's a carved onyx donkey. It's all solid black. See, it's got this sticker on it over here that says what I was trying to read to you. Maybe you can see that. 
Maybe you can make that out. Here it is. And it's carved onyx. Um, I haven't felt any chips or anything off of his ears. His tail feels okay. See, here's, here's the tail. Here's his butt. Look at it even kind of outlines the tail there. And his feet. Nice carved onyx piece. If you like stone carving things. Um, and he's pretty good size and he's got very good weight. Um, he's like about six inches long. If you go from nose to to tail yeah, like this he's about six inches and then from the ears if you measure from the top of the ears so six by about five down to the foot if you go from the top of the ears down to the foot he's like five yeah he's a neat donkey carved onyx I know I think he's pretty special Anyway, I would part with my carved onyx donkey. Thirteen dollars, number twenty-four. Thirteen dollars, twenty-four carved onyx donkey. I think he's neat. Yeah, I think he is too, Jose. I, I like him too, uh, you know, I mean, and he would be actually happy living in all of my collections along with my beautiful piece. Cause I like, I like black. I like a lot of black. And so he would look really good in my cabinet with my little purple black vase too. I love this vase. You guys have to go back and watch the video. Anybody who came in late, you know, please feel free to email me. Um, if you see something on here that didn't sell that you like. Okay, and then I think I will show you and one more piece. Oh, actually two more pieces. I want to show you this. You like turtle? Yeah, I thought so too, Julie. I thought so too. Look at this nice turtle. Look at his face. And he's, he's probably not real old. He does have a marking on the bottom that just says, it has the numbers 5053 and then like a dash and a three. You can see where the glaze kind of ran a little bit in the bottom down there too. And he's like, um, um, oh, I don't know, almost more of a terracotta kind of a thing. I don't know what to call that. Um, not like a chalkware, I don't think, but he's, he's, anyway, he'd be like a, a tea light holder, or you could even put fairy lights in him. Um, he's got a little hole on the top. You know, you could do lots of little things with him. I think he's a great, like a garden, well, I don't know that I'd want to put him on the garden, maybe out on the patio on a table, but I wouldn't want to sit him out and let him get real weathered. I think he's adorable. He'd look absolutely darling sitting out at night with a little, even a faux tea light or some fairy lights inside of him while you're out there having your martini and those great glasses that nobody bought that somebody should buy. And he measures, like how I threw that in, he measures about, let's see, from the head across all the way, if you, but he's going to bend it up a little bit. It's about eight inches from, from the head to the tail. And then he's about, oh, wide. Then he's about five inches wide across, and he stands... Let me see if I can set him here and measure him. I think he's neat. I really like this guy. I like the turtle. And then he's about five inches tall, too. And I think I just love this little turtle. I think he's adorable. I think he's just a great piece. So this probably clay. I don't even want to call him. I'm not sure. Terracotta, some type of clay with some glazing. You can see where it's got like a mat. And then it's got some shinier glaze around him. And look at his face. I think he's adorable. So if anybody likes my little turtle and wants to give my little turtle a new home, 
you could have my little turtle for eight dollars and he's number 27. Turtle, eight dollars, eight dollars. Anybody want an eight dollar turtle? Otherwise, I'll put him outside. I think he's cute. No, I'm not going to put him outside, outside. I'd put him out on my deck or rearrange. I'm getting ready to rearrange some of the stuff around my, I have a wood stove that sits up on like a um, kind of a brick foundation thing around my, um, between like my entryway and my living room because it's it's all kind of an open area and I've got all kinds of stuff on there and I think it's kind of time that I rearrange that. I've got a bunch of like deer figurines and stuff. Maybe I'll do redo that for the summer and put amphibians. A turtle is an amphibian, right? No, is are reptiles amphibians? Is that right? Somebody tell me if I'm screwing up. No turtle, huh? Oh, I like the turtle. I thought for sure somebody would snatch my turtle. Okay, then I wanted to show you. I'm not going to show those. I will show you. I'm going to show this. Okay. I got this really neat, like hand painted wooden kind of a bowl, but it's not real deep, or, or I guess you could say it's a platter. Look at this beautiful colors. And it's wood. There's no, no signers or makers or anything. This is the back. It's not real deep. It's almost like a platter or a plate, I guess. But I would put fruit or something in there. I don't know. It's beautiful. Look at these colors. All this hand painted. I don't think there's a signature on the front either. It seems like I kind of scanned the front. And uh, now there's a little bit of wear on like this one flower right here. It looks like maybe a little bit of the paint is worn on that. I think this is beautiful. I think this is absolutely beautiful. It measures. I love this. This is great for summer too. It's like 11 inches and it's not completely even. You can tell it's kind of a handmade piece because it's not completely even. It's not quite 11. It, it's like 10 and, and almost three quarters when you turn it this way. Um, but coming straight across from this side, it's, it's, it's a flat 11. A little bit more maybe even, right around 11. I think it's gorgeous. Look at the colors on this. It's like this is kind of a this is kind of a burgundy-ish, and those are purple and lavender and blue with the yellow centers, lots of pretty vibrant green on this, and this is on like a black backdrop. Isn't that pretty? I love this. Hand painted. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. And um, so if you're interested in my beautiful hand-painted plate, oh, I love this. I'm tempted to go see if that comes off. Don't you think that's pretty? It looks like it's got like mums and almost like, these almost look like little pansies or something. This kind of thing. I don't know, some kind of like mums and stuff. Anyway, this beautiful, I think this is beautiful. And it's got like this edging all around it and like orange and and kind of bluish white with the yellow through it. So this is going to be $12 and it's number 25. And I think it's beautiful. I just think this is beautiful and I think it's worth $12, no problem for me anyway. Hand painted, beautiful plate. Hand painted wood. What do we call this? I think it's stunning too, Tanya. I really do. I think it's super, super pretty. Um, what did I call this? A platter? Bowl? Let's just call it a bowl. Shallow bowl. So pretty. So pretty. Number 25. 12 bucks. That's all. Who doesn't want that? For I think it's gorgeous. I'm going to put him out on the patio with my turtle then. Look at that. Can you imagine that? Look at how pretty those would be out there on your table with a margarita, with your margaritas and the turtle. I mean, how cool is that? 
I think that's great. The turtle with the light in them. You could even put colored lights inside this turtle so it could coordinate with this beautiful hand-painted wood, wood plate. I think it's beautiful. Okay. Okay. And then I have, I guess I'll just show one more piece. If anybody's interested in, um, I have, well, I have, I don't know, Joanne didn't come in. I do have another Royal Copley that I picked up this week. There's handmade wood plate, the hand. I can't keep up. So if I missed something and somebody wanted something and I missed it, let me know. So this is Royal Copley um, signed Royal Copley. Any Royal Copley collectors in here? And she's a nice little Asian planner. And she stands like... Oh, she's a good eight inches tall. She looks like she's pregnant. And then she is about four across. Maybe if you count her pregnant belly in there, if you go around the pregnant belly, she's about five. Doesn't she look like she's pregnant? Look. look definitely looks pregnant. Um, she's very clean. She's obviously been used. Yeah, that's I thought too, Tanya. On that on that platter, I thought that platter is gorgeous. That's why you know I'll just hang on to that for now. Definitely, definitely. I think it's I think that's a great piece. So this little uh, real Copley little Asian girl, she she's got her little hands behind her back, and she's got her little basket of whatever. And uh, anyway, so this little Royal Copley girl, I would let her go for twelve dollars, and she's number twenty six. Royal Copley, E Y twelve Copley planter number twenty six for the Royal Copley. And then I'm going to show one more piece, and then I'm going to get off of here. And that's this planter. And I think he said he's made in Japan. And uh, he's like, what do you call this? Oh, my God. What kind of a bird is this? Like a heron? Maybe heron. And it's a nice little heron planter. And, uh, you know, he's not tiny, but he's not huge. He's got nice feet. I got no chips or cracks. But I can feel even his, his little tail's intact. And his beak and his whatever that part is called, the feathers on his head. Everything seems to be intact with him. He's he's not huge, but he's not tiny. He's not as big as she is. From the tail across, you know, like, oh, where's that? Let's go from the tail. Just across the base to the base is like four inches from here to here. I miss all kinds of stuff. I'm afraid I'm going to miss things. That's why people have got to yell at me. I didn't moderate anybody today, but we didn't have any issues. So somebody should remind me that of doing that too when we come in. And please like and subscribe. So he's like from his tail to the base. Well, the base itself is probably only a couple of inches. If you just measure the base, it's like three. The tail to the base is four. He's about total height. Uh, four to five, four and a half, if you measure from the base up to this part on his head. He's totally cool. If you like your birds, I think he's a great planter. I've never seen one before. He's made in Japan. I'd let him go for $7, and he's number 29. Heron planter. And I said seven, right? Okay. 
So I think that's all I'm going to show. So I've sold a few things. Mr. L. Page, hello. Oh, very cool. Oh, but Julie, Julie beat you, Mr. L. Page. Have you been lurking again? Julie Schwartz, thank you. Thank you. Um, Julie Schwartz. You've been lurking back there again. How long have you been lurking, Randy? I love to razz you. Okay, so the parent planner is Julie. Julie Schwartz. Okay. Now, I think so too. How long have you been back there? You do that. You sit back there and don't say a word and just watch. Are you? <laughs> Never mind. I'm not going to give you a hard time anymore. A hard way to go. But I'll say you. I'll say you the little Asian girl if you want her. The Royal Copley. What else do I have? Do I have anything else I can sell real quick? I have. I'm going to save those for the Western. And I'm going to save that for the Western. And I'm going to. I have ashtrays. Um, I think I want to save that. I have. Oh. Is anybody interested? In my skeleton keys. Did anybody like those? I have these two skeleton keys. One smaller than the other. The largest one. And they're like wrought iron. And the largest one measures. About five and a half inches. Long. Good size skeleton keys. Rustic. Very rustic. The smaller one. These are very cool. I like these. And the smaller one is not quite four inches, but right right around four inches. Blue heron. Dang, that auto. Oh, okay, that's I was thinking heron. I saw one one time, too. It was gorgeous. So I have these two really rustic wrought iron skeleton keys. Aren't those cool? And if I would let my skeleton keys go for $12 for the set. Um, or if you don't want them as a set, I'd go six on the big one and four on the little one. Ten dollars for the set, right? Six on the big one, four on the little one. Um, skeleton keys number 28. And these are neat. Ten dollars. Or we could split them up if somebody really only wants one. 28, 28 skeleton keys. Do you want them both, Diane? I hope you take them both. I hope you take them both. I think they're just fabulous. Just fabulous. I like finding stuff like this. Yes, cool. Very, very cool. Yay, Diane. Okay. So I'm not going to show anything else today. If you see anything going back that you're interested in and you watch um, the sale, you know, just... Drop me an email. I say 10. Um, and uh, what else was I? Oh, and like I said, I'll probably invoice um, between Sunday and Monday sometime. Monday, I do have a, a procedure going to. I've got a funny lump in one of my legs. They're going to do a quick little biopsy thing on. So I'm having that done Monday. Um, and then I've got to take my mother back to the bank to work on something else that's a piece of cake easy. So I should be free Monday evening that I can invoice and hopefully get things mailed out by like Wednesday. Um, I will often attend, if nothing else, to listen to the infectious tone of your... Oh, my God. I just... Oh, I just snort laughed. <laughs> You're so funny. You're so funny. I'm so glad you guys just come in. And anytime you want to just come and lurk and hang out, I am totally cool with that. Um, I wish I could think, you know, it's hard for me. I like to kind of tell stories and, and try to have some fun. But I'm not a really good multitasker sometimes when I have to focus. So and then I get off on things and I forget. But um, 
I'm so glad you guys come and hang out and even just sit in the background and, you know, feel free just to interject anything you want, anytime. And if, if, you know, and remind me that sometimes I should probably, you know, put on a couple of moderators, at least to help me keep an eye on things too, because I, you know, I'm so afraid I'm going to miss something. And I don't want to miss anything. And I'm so afraid to, you know, remind me when people come in as, you know, that um, to be warm and welcoming because, you know, a lot of times I just, uh, you know, look past things and, and I don't want to lose focus on what I'm doing either. So I don't ever want to be rude or inhospitable to anybody. So please don't uh, anybody ever feel offended that I might not say something or acknowledge you when I should, or if I miss some kind of a comment that I should probably comment on, you know, somebody holler at me, get my attention because I'm off in my own world, uh, you know, here too. Oh, Jules, thank you. Thank you. I know I've got more stories to tell. I was going to tell you another story, but the stories are easier for me to tell when I'm doing a haul <coughs> because then I don't have to keep track of people buying things. Thank you, Tanya. Because um, it remind me sometime, I still got to tell you guys about when I was 14 and ran away with the carnival. And then another, and so remind me that when we're doing a haul sometime. And uh, or when Brenda's here and I'm going to get Brenda in here, maybe not until after she has her surgery, but I will. Um, and also I was doing one the other day. I was talking to my mother. We were somewhere and I was um, oh, we were at the funeral home picking up my sister's ashes. And, and, and the guy who takes care of us, his name is Ted, our mortician friend. I call him the family stuffer. And Ted and I are only a couple of years apart. So we went to we both grew up in the Reno Sparks area. And we um, and and we knew a lot of the same people that went to the same junior high and high school. And so I was thinking of another story the other day that I'll have to tell you sometime about money for Margo Day. So remind me someday to tell you about that one, because when I mentioned it to him, he said, oh, my God, he said, my wife, when I told her who you were, she said, my wife brought that up and she actually remembered it. And and this was like from ninth grade. So we're going back to like 19. God, I was in ninth grade was like 19. 70, maybe like right around 1970 in that area. So it was a long time ago. So it's funny how people will remember you clear back, even from those things and some of the stories and the things that you did. And when we brought it up and he started crying, my mother was like, oh my God, I had no idea that you did that. I'm like, mother, I told you about that. Anyway, I'm going to let you guys go. So I'll invoice probably tomorrow night and Monday or Monday sometime and hopefully get things shipped out by Wednesday. Go back and watch the video to see anything that didn't sell that you may uh, be interested in. And, uh, you know, you can always throw offers at me, too. I'm always willing to entertain your offers. So thank you for hanging out. I'm going to go wait for my friend Syria to get here and take her out to karaoke tonight. And I'm going to go touch up my hair and makeup and change my shirt. So thanks, everybody. Have a great evening, too. Everybody be kind and gentle and, and loving to each other. And I will see you again soon. So night-night.